In today's video, I get creative at home with a macro lens, a single speed light, and some hypnotically psychedelic soap bubbles. I'll show you how you too can get shots at home just like this. So of course you're joining me in the studio. Um, I'm staying at home like everyone else and I'm sure like everyone else, uh, creativity is uh, starting to wear a little thin. So I was having a look around for some really, really cool ideas of things I could do. And um, I've always really liked macro and I, I've done a whole video on uh, macro for nature and wildlife and how to get super cool close-up shots of uh, insects and things in your garden. But I thought it'd be quite interesting to do something inside. And um, I had a look and I, I, I've seen across the internet various things about doing uh, photographs of soap bubbles and you get all these cool swirling patterns and it really looked awesome. I thought, let's give that a go. So you don't actually need a lot of kit to do this. What you really need is a macro lens. You need a, a big light source, which I'll come to, um, and you need a straw and some sort of soapy mixture. So I'll start with the soapy mixture because this is the bit that I struggled the most with. So obviously things like uh, washing up liquid is going to be a really really great substance to use but using the washing up liquid by itself um, means you get quite weak bubbles and they pop very very easily. It's quite difficult to do. So what I've got here is this gross looking mixture which is mostly washing up liquid but I just tried adding a few other bits in here as well. So what we've actually got is about a tablespoon of rapeseed oil, um, just normal cooking rapeseed oil. I'm sure veg oil or olive oil would work. I also put a dash of um, uh, balsamic vinegar in just to turn it into uh, a lovely dipping sauce for bread. Um, I'm sure actually no, as I accidentally used the wrong side of the uh, straw to blow and it tastes absolutely foul which is not a surprise. It does seem to have done the trick. It is, um, it is more hard wearing as a, uh, as a mixture, by which I mean the bubbles last longer. So I can blow a big bubble and it stays around for maybe 20 seconds or so, which is long enough to capture a few different shots and to make sure, of course, that you get your focus right. Um, I've got it just on a normal backdrop and I'm making the bubbles with a straw in an obvious way, just by blowing into it. There you go. Nice big bubble on top. Boop. And of course, above me, we've got the light source. Now I'm just gonna be using uh, a single speed light for this, just a Godox AD200. At the moment, I've got an LED light, just it's continuous for the video, so I can actually show you what I'm doing, but for, for most of the shots that I've done for this, it's just been with flash, so very easy. If you've got a, uh, a Canon Speedlight, Nikon, or a Godox thing, then you can easily do that. You need a big light source so that it wraps around that bubble, lights everything um, evenly. Doesn't need to be a big soft box. Um, I, you could use a, a scrim. I've used a smaller strip box as well. Um, I just found that this one was the easiest and most convenient for me, um, particularly for doing video as well. Um, but experiment with what you've got. You could, I'm sure you could use an umbrella or um, maybe even just a big sheet pulled over, basically anything big that really lights it up. 
Camera wise, I've just got my normal 5D4 and I've got a 100mm macro lens on the front. Now, I've also got a extension tube on here, which just lets you focus a little bit closer to the lens. The setup itself is pretty straightforward. Camera on a tripod, get it nice and low, so you're almost looking up at the bubble. That emphasizes that whole feel of it being a planet, makes the bubble seem a lot bigger than it really is. And of course, using a macro lens with the extension tubes, you can get the lens really, really, really close to where the bubbles are in order to get close up on those details. To get the light to wrap around the bubble, you need to get it nice and low, pretty much as low as it can go without actually getting in the shot. Um, and obviously you just need to play around with your power settings on the light. Camera settings wise though, I've been using the maximum sync speed of your camera, which uh, on this one is 200th of a second. Uh, my aperture has been somewhere around f14 to f16, which is basically mean I'm using my light at about full power, because obviously that's quite a dark image, so you're relying relying on having a lot of light being pumped out by your speed light. The process of actually taking the shot is pretty straightforward. Once you've got your camera and everything in place, you get your straw, squeeze your head under the light. There we go, got some bubbles. Get the camera into position. Hopefully a bubble will last long enough for you to slightly reframe and get your focus and then you take your shot. The problem is with getting your focus is that every time you create a new bubble, it might be in a slightly different position in the little pool that you've created. Um, and so you will need to refocus each time because even a couple of millimeters back and forth using, um, uh, using any extension tubes like this, it means it's gonna be out of focus. And it's super important that that swirling detail is pin sharp. Let's try again. Do you remember to blow down the straw rather than suck in? Otherwise it's gross. I found that this has been a real trial and error process. You can create a bubble that doesn't last very long or it's in the wrong position or that the swirls don't really come out in quite the way you want them to. Um, or maybe you just don't get your focus um, in time. I've probably taken 300 or so photos. You blow a bubble, try and get the composition that you want, focus, take the shot. And as you are focusing, you'll notice all of those colors are really swirling around. The textures change. Um, it goes from being a relatively form, not formless, but lifeless bubble. And then as the air around it starts to affect it, everything swirls around so much more. Those colors become more vibrant um, and it just becomes a lot more interesting to photograph. So it is worth, once you've got your shot framed up, keep on taking those photos so that you've got lots of different options of swirly patterns. I do find as well that once the bubble starts to get towards the end of its life, just before it bursts, it starts to lose a lot of those colors. And actually, I don't know if it's just the mixture I've used, but I I've found on mine that it almost goes into like a webbing. You can literally see the holes starting to appear. And then as the bubble bursts, it sort of bursts with these strands that look really, really cool. But I've been moving my camera around as well, getting in a bit closer, trying to get just on those details and then backing it off, trying to get the whole bubble and even trying to blow lots of smaller bubbles in there as well, just to give a little bit more texture. And you can help it along by just giving it a little, little blow. And as you do, it starts to swirl even more, shakes those colors up. If you keep doing it too long, it bursts because obviously the bubble dries out and you gotta go create another one. It's really one of the great joys of doing anything in macro is that you just don't see things in this much detail normally. It's the same thing I found when I was taking photos of uh, insects in my previous video and I didn't realize how, how amazingly beautiful and complex and colorful some of these things actually were. And this is just a bubble. It's so basic, we see them all the time. You know, you do your washing up, you, there's billions of them in the bowl, but seeing them and lighting them like this and getting to see the level of detail on them is amazing. Seeing all these swirls that I didn't know, I didn't know happened. I didn't know that it looked like this. So again, it's just a case of making more bubbles. Back to your camera, quick reframe, refocus and keep shooting. It's 
course important to actually have a look back at your pictures on the back of camera and just check that you have got the shots that you want. Have a zoom in, just check that everything's in focus and that it's exposed just as you want it. But I have really found this to be such a good, fun little experiment. This is by no means my invention. Bubble photography has been around for some time. I'm definitely not the first to do it. I certainly won't be the last, but it's been great fun in giving it a go when we've had so much downtime, when creativity is starting to slide. And I think it's just a great, practice of how to use lighting, how to do these sorts of things. And the fact that you can get such amazing looking results at the end, I think is really, really exciting. But obviously there's no right or wrong way of doing this. This is just how I've been trying to do it. Um, I've taken loads of different photos, really looking forward to getting them over into Lightroom, seeing what they look like. So why don't we go and do that now? So we've got our pictures over in Lightroom and honestly the biggest and most time consuming process was actually just going through them all and getting rid of all the ones which were out of focus or I just didn't like or were underexposed. Um, and the result is I've got now this nice collection of shots um, where the bubbles are vibrant, they look great. I've done a lot of processing on these already but it's pretty basic processing. Let's, if we just go and have a look, for example, at uh, this shot here. Let's go ahead and right click, and so I can show you what I've been doing. I'm gonna reset all of the edits. And as you can see, it's, it's all still there. I haven't used any weird filters or anything too, um, uh, too difficult. This is basically just lots of exposure tweaks. Um, so first up, it is very dark, so I'm going to ramp up that exposure. And you can see it starts to go a little bit um, hazy and stuff. So the things that we're going to be leaning on quite a lot, dehaze and clarity. Now, normally in most parts of my photography, whether it's cars, portraits, landscapes, tend not to go too heavy on anything clarity wise but with this it's all about those bold colors that contrast so we want to basically ramp everything up make it super punchy super crisp and the dehaze tool and the clarity tools are great ways of doing that as you can see as we start to move those sliders up these colors just start to get more saturated they start to pop more it is starting to get a little bit darker so we're going to up that exposure even further and we're going to up the contrast we're going to up the whites. We're going to bring down the highlights just a touch. Maybe I'm going to bring that contrast back down a bit, actually. Flick it on and off. We can see just how much of a difference that has made. And if we zoom in, we can just see the level of detail on there. I'm not sure on this one, my focus was exactly where I wanted it to be. It's maybe there, but the details are a little bit soft. What we can do is go down here and in the sharpening tool we can really amp up that sharpening. Because there's not lots of like fine detail in this, it's more about those swirling patterns, adding quite a bit of sharpening isn't going to make it look over sharpened. If you did that on a portrait where you've got maybe eyelashes and different details on a person's face, using the sharpening tool too much can look a little bit odd, but I think actually it works quite well here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of noise reduction as well. And that should just help those details pop out a little bit more. And it has, there is very much the effect of over sharpening, but I don't mind it too much here. Um, I'm going to get the crop tool up. I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. I just want these, uh, the middle third, the lower third to sort of go in line with this band of color here, almost if, as if that's the horizon on a planet. Uh, and I'm going to bring it in just to cut off that line of, of brightness on the bottom, which I think was possibly the rim of the glass bowl that I was using. Don't want that. I do like these other bubbles as foreground interest. Sort of helps make the big bubble seem even bigger because it's putting it in context of, well, here are some small bubbles and here's now this massive planet-sized bubble in the background. Uh, so I already think that looks pretty cool. But those bubbles in the, in the foreground are a little bit too bright still, so I'm going to bring up a graduated filter lower the exposure and we're going to bring that in just like that play around up the contrast a little bit and there we go and if we flick that on and off that's only what a few minutes of 
edit tweaks and it, it's made such a difference. You can play around a lot more, play around with the uh, with the color balance, you can even change the hues if you want and get something even more psychedelic. Um, we could try using the brush tool to brush in additional contrast, additional clarity in certain areas just to make it pop a little bit more. Might not be entirely necessary. You'll know when you've gone too far with these because it will just look a little bit too much. Um, but I think shots like this can really stand to have a lot of contrast, a lot of colour, because that's kind of the point of the shot. It just makes it look like swirls of paint. You wouldn't look at that and think, oh yeah, that's just a soap bubble. It looks very, very different. And as you can see, this is the same shot, but I've just taken it ever so slightly later. And as a result, those swirls have changed even more. Um, so I'm going to just paint in a little bit more light on these. Bump that exposure again, bump that contrast, bring those shadows down, up that dehaze a little and up the clarity a bit more. And again, we've got something looking really, really cool. And as you flick through the other ones, you'll see that you just got lots of different effects. With this one, I wanted again to emphasize that planet rising sort of thing. So not only have I um, done various tweaks to the exposure and the, uh, and the clarity, but I've also brought in a, another filter, a uh, radial filter to darken off this whole bottom half of this uh, planet. If we flick that on and off, we can see that there's more detail down here but I've tried to make it darker to make it almost like a crescent shape of the planet, which I think looks pretty cool. I love this one because uh, this one, we've got the bubbles in the foreground, but the big bubble in the background is doing what I, I mentioned uh, earlier, I think, in that as the bubbles start to get towards the end of their life, as it were, before they burst, um, a lot of the actual... I don't know if it's the water in the bubble um, starts to evaporate and it basically creates more of a webbing rather than a full bubble. And I don't know whether that's particularly down to the, the sort of mixture that I've used or if all bubbles do this, but I love that in this shot we've got these full colourful bubbles in the foreground and this huge like rising uh, bubble of just webbing and it they barely even look connected. The focus isn't amazing on it, but if we look in close at that detail, it's just fascinating. I absolutely love doing this. Um, and again here, um, this is just before it's gone to the webbing stage, but a lot of that colour has started to go. I haven't desaturated this at all. As you can see, vibrance and saturation both haven't been touched. Um, flick that on and off. That's straight out of camera. And that's all we've done to this. Um, it's basically black and white already. If we take that saturation out, it's just that slight blue hue. Um, I think that looks really, really cool. And as we flick through these, we just get this psychedelic dream of effects going on in these bubbles. I just love it. I think this is amazing. The great thing about this is that you can just do this at home just like I have done. This is just taken a pot of bubbly mixture, a straw, a camera, and a speed light in a softbox. And these are the results that you can get. They are super creative, they're super cool to try, and they're just a hell of a lot of fun. And at a time right now when you can't go outside, you can't be going taking cool landscapes, you can't be going out trying to find insects to do actual macro, um, actual uh, nature macro, it's a really, really interesting effect to try at home, and it's probably quite a good learning tool of how to control light, how to control your focus, and to get these sorts of effects. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased, and I cannot encourage you stronger to go and give this a try if you have even a basic setup of tools. If you don't have a macro lens, you can get macro extension tubes on Amazon. My extension tubes were, I think, something like 20 pounds maybe, put that on your existing lens and you'll be able to focus much, much closer. So a really, really affordable way of giving this a try. Uh, if you do want to try this, I would love to see what results you get. Please do hit me up on Twitter with at BatteryHQ or Instagram also with at BatteryHQ. Let me know what sort of shots you can get. But I do hope this video has been really useful and I hope it's given you some ideas of what to do to stay creative during the lockdown. If you do like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe. If 
if you don't already, and I will see you next time.